It's not very clear what they want out of it. They want intelligence, they want to know what, what is going on. But these specific undercovers are not aimed at finding crime. Hello, this is Newspeaks. I'm Luisa and I'm here with Dr. Evelyn Lubers, an independent researcher and a civil rights advocate. She's been monitoring police and secret services and supporting activists against surveillance. You started the Undercover Research Group. Could you tell us um, what the Undercover Research Group actually is? Yeah, it is a small network of activists who have been engaged in exposing undercovers in the UK. And this started in 2010 when Mark Kennedy was exposed. He was, he was an activist and he was no longer trusted by his friends. Especially when they found a passport in a name that was not his. It later turned out that he had been an undercover officer for more than five years. Uh, he lived the life of an activist. So this was the start of uh, more and more undercover officers that were found out. And when, when, we no when I noticed it became a pattern, I, I tried to find people who were engaged in doing this research to coordinate it and to set up a structure to do it you know, to do it in a better way, to learn from it. Do you think uh, that authorities are trying to detect dissent by these undercover police? Uh, yeah, it, it is, it's not very clear what they want out of it. They want intelligence, they want to know what, what is going on. But these specific undercovers are not aimed at finding uh, crime. So if that, yeah, they just want to know what is going on. And we know, for instance, from an uh, undercover who was in Cardiff, he actually tried to create conflict within a group. So he was telling stories about other people and he actually, after he was active there for a few years, he cre created so much conflict that the group actually fall apart. So that can be one of the things that, that they do. I'm a young person as, uh, who wants to go to protest like other persons in my age and generation. Should I also be afraid that I will be spied on by police or by intelligence agencies? Um, and how should I respond um, if this is the case? But most of the protest groups are very open and it's good that they are. But of course uh, it can happen that undercover officers join the protest too. It can be possible. It is good to have an awareness of the fact that it can happen, but not let it stop you. And be very strict with security measure, measures only if you have to, if you're going to do something that has to stay secret or that is maybe very dangerous. You have a small group and you, you try and take, uh, you take your measurements to to make sure nothing happens. Although this happens and may happen more and more, it's very bad to become very paranoia because then nothing hap will happen again. You have also dealt with tobacco industries. Uh, could you give us an overview about their tactics and the ways these stories um, framed um, by mainstream media? Um, yeah, we do know there's, there's a lot of lobbying going on and there's a lot of uh, opinion making, for instance, through uh, important uh, uh, blog, blog writers, so in the blogosphere. There is, and there's, for instance, we did all the research into the tactics of the tobacco companies. And we had a wiki website which was called tobaccotactics.org. But we were not fast enough to get the Twitter account with that name. So there was people, it's not the industry, but we, we don't know who was behind it, but we think people paid by the industry, they, they used that handle. They pretended to be us, but say outrageous things or say, say stupid things about us. So they tried to undermine how serious we were or how our credit. On your website there are also questions and 
when I'm in the protest group or something, um, what signs should I look for in order to detect this? The list of questions is not like if you can answer all the questions with yes, you have a spy, but then you have a reason to investigate. So, for instance, um, very often an undercover officer would have a car or a van when not, not many people have cars. So he would always offer to take people to a demonstration or to take them home. So, you know, all as ways to find out where the protest is or where people live is very handy. They would often have jobs that would take them away for a few days at a time. So maybe abroad in, in an export or some would pretend to be in gardening. So they would have a job somewhere else and this was just to cover for the days that they would go to their real family. Uh, often they would have uh, ready access to money and give rounds in the pub but and and the money would not it wouldn't fit the job they had you know there was a sort of a discrepancy between the money they made and the money they spent. So that's that's a few things, a few of the questions. In general, how important is it to do investigative reports today? I think it's very important. The current newspapers hardly have the money or the time to do it. So there's groups like ours who invest, in fact do the research that has to be done. And we bring the stories to the newspapers. And well, there is of course the issue of who's going to pay for that. Uh, because we want our story to get into the paper, so we we can't. Uh, it's difficult to ask for payment for a story you want in the paper. You have, you know, uh, and there's, so we we choose to work with journalists who work at, in the mainstream media and have them publish it with giving us some credits, no money. And I I'm really looking for funding for this work, so. Yeah, we're looking into crowdfunding and to donations and, and for some funding from foundations. Internet freedoms, I mean just three words, freedom of information, freedom of communication and informational self-determination.